you're gonna make a long successful career of this, you gotta be mentally strong. Baby sunshine, baby I just wasn't focused. I didn't have a fire in my veins like I usually do. But as for me, I'll wait and see. I don't have that uh, that killer inside. Maybe it'll bring my love. After a lackluster, uncharacteristically tentative performance against Fitch, in which he was controlled for large portions of the fight, a confused Rory MacDonald made an unusual admission regarding his waning appetite for violence. I don't have that killer inside. It's really hard to explain. I hesitate a little bit now. I don't know what to say. It wasn't my best performance. God has really changed me the last little while. He's changed my spirit, changed my heart. It takes a certain spirit to come in here and put a man through pain. I just don't know if I have the same drive to hurt people anymore. I don't know what it is. It's confusing. But I know the Lord has something in store for me. He was speaking to me in here tonight. It's a different feeling. I think the instinct of most fighters would be to preserve their image. Play the lackluster performance off as a bad day at the office. Rory just spilled his guts and let everyone know where his head's at. And where it's at is quite concerning. There's been numerous theories circulating after the event. One explanation offered is that Rory had just come through a five-rounder. He was emotional, he was obviously a little confused about the fight, and he was blowing things out of proportion, which is entirely possible. Um, it's, these are normal emotions, especially after a fight. You're so full of emotions right after a fight like that. So I think he was just being honest, like you said, what was going on in his head at that time during the fight. But as Ariel pointed out, this is not the first time he's been talking like this. In an interview on the Helwani Hour following his fight with Musashi, Rory sounded like his head was just no longer in the game. At this point, he sounded more burned out than anything. He mentioned at least five times that heading into the gay guard fight, there was no fire and no passion for the sport. I just wasn't focused. I didn't have a fire in my, uh, in my veins like I usually do. And uh, I didn't put myself out of my comfort zone for training for this fight. When you don't have that, there's no focus, there's no, there's no passion, there's no fire, and it showed in the fight. I was too relaxed. I, I didn't have any fire to, to fight hard. I was too relaxed in the fight. I didn't, I didn't have that fire. It was pretty clear to see, too. In the fight, he almost describes himself as a lamb to the slaughter. He says he didn't fight hard enough. And when Gegard was mauling him, he just didn't have it in him to put up a struggle. He squashed me, put me on my back, and beat me up. So that was pretty much the beginning of the end. I didn't really have any desire to push hard. And uh, it's embarrassing, but that's the truth. So I think we can kind of dispense of the emotions running high explanation. This is a problem that's been around for a while and appears to be getting worse. Another common sentiment is that the second Lawler fight has really taken a toll on Rory. And he's never been quite the same since. Which I think is undeniable, even Faraz seemed to acknowledge that fight changed him, describing it as a significant turning point in his career. I think every fight makes you a different person. Uh, that was a very significant fight because, you know, he, it was his goal in life to become world champion. He came back to become world champion. So for me, it was, uh, it was a life lesson for sure because it was such a huge moment. But every fight, uh, to a lesser degree, you know, I think that was the most significant uh, turning point in his career. But Faraz, who says he's seen this type of thing many times and mainly from mature and fighters who have seen both sides of the sport said he felt the will to compete and the killer instinct required to do so are like a pendulum and in time will swing back to the state of ruthless fucking intent required to continue with his career i think the pendulum always swings the other way as well you know i think uh, he's gonna feel that way now and then tomorrow he might get over it and then you know he might feel like that way again it's normal to have mixed feelings uh but again you know the pendulum might swing the other way he might wake up today and be like you know what let's do this let's fight let's continue and i think that's what's gonna happen the idea that rory's bad intentions will rebound is possible i mean we saw it with nganu and faraz is an expert on the temperament of fighters but probably the most interesting explanation was that Rory is having some type of religiously inspired shift in consciousness and is moving in a direction that's incompatible with a vocation in violence. Rory outlined his spiritual journey on the Pull No Punches podcast. In a nutshell, Rory has always identified as a Christian, but in his youth, it was more in the absent-minded way kids adopt the religion of their parents. He didn't put too much thought into it, 
and didn't have a relationship with Jesus. You know, I was told the Bible stories. I went to Catholic mm -hmm. school, the whole thing that uh, probably a lot of people can relate to, but no real relationship or knowledge or understanding with Jesus. In his late teens, he felt a call to God. And as some of you might remember from around the time of the Condit fight, he was balls deep in Christianity. I was hungry for God, but with no guidance, uh. with no, no church, no people around me, no good influence. I really didn't have any answers. So the religion was kind of inaccessible at that point, without guidance or a church or a community. After the Condit fight, he moved to Montreal and pretty quickly became embroiled in the unholy world of partying like a motherfucker and just generally enjoying your youth. Hey, why not? The old religion went out the fucking window for a while and Jesus was in the back seat for a couple of years. Slowly, slowly, I started just getting pulled away from it into just like, you know, doing what people do uh, in the yeah. world, like going partying, you know, living life for myself, you know, and doing doing what pleased me and, and that's it. Training and having fun and fighting. That's it. But after the Lawler fight, he met his future wife, who happened to know a thing or two about Christianity. I uh, met my wife-to-be, Olivia. A uh, lifelong Christian, uh, grew, grew, grew up in a Christian family, uh, mm. a good Christian church. She invited me to go to church. So I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd really wow. like to go. Like right away in my head, I was like, this is what I wanted. It was really, uh, it was God's grace that pulled me there to meet Olivia, for her to bring me there. That just was kind of day one. In 2017, he went all in on the whole thing. 2017 August, I, yeah. I gave my life to Christ and I was baptized Amazing. and uh, just been living, living a good life ever since, you know, just following Jesus. But recently, he feels like his relationship with Jesus has leveled up. There's some kind of promotion like happening right now, like I, I'm gaining ground in my faith and my relationship to God and my closeness to God and yeah. my fire has never been hotter for God, to, so to speak. So Now... There are many fighters who are religious and would happily head kick an opponent straight into a body bag. But there's just something about the circuitous route and introspective nature of Rory that makes him an unusual case. One of the more interesting lines in his explanation is the following. Uh, being in God's word every day and trying to apply what the Bible says in every aspect of my life. So it sounds like he's now looking at the world through the lens of Christianity, really examining the details of his life, making sure the two are compatible. And the violence is probably disconcerting. It's easy to see how his newfound religiosity could create some serious cognitive dissonance. The idea that you are a good Christian, challenged by the very nature of your job, resulting in an unwillingness to pull a trigger, a kind of a half-hearted tentativeness. I could easily buy that explanation. Faraz said he looked hesitant. He said classic Rory would have finished Fitch in round four, and he thought it looked like he was sparing Fitch to violence. Yeah, I would say that Rory's tried to avoid the, the brutal part of the fight a little more than, you, than he has in the past. I think the old Rory would not have hesitated to put him away. As Rory said, I just don't know if I have the same drive to hurt people anymore. In a statement he released days after the fight, he rejected the idea that it was an inability to reconcile the teachings of Christianity with a career administering ass whoopings. But he did explain how in a less direct manner, religion was ultimately behind his newfound tentativeness. I used to fight with anger I held within myself from pain I had experienced in my past. To be honest, I believe this comes from my heart changing as I'm walking a new life as a Christian. The Lord has given me peace and freedom from the pain that haunted me in my heart from my younger years. I would only satisfy myself for a short period of time from winning fights until the feeling would resonate in me again. So now I don't feel the same emotions I have in the past while competing. Now that is an interesting quote that says a lot about the guy. Firstly, he explains that he's always fought with anger from events that took place in his youth. Exactly what he's talking about here, I don't know. I rewatched his appearance on Rogan, and there was a couple of hints that he might be referring to bullying. He mentions that before he was in MMA, he was small and used to get his ass whooped. When I started martial arts, I was a I was a little puke. Mm -hmm. You know, I got beat up by bigger kids, or you know. So later in the podcast, 
He says that as a child they moved around a lot. Really? I grew up um I grew up in like, you know, nature and stuff mm -hmm. in my early like childhood and stuff and then I got tossed around the city, you know, having to live with parents that moved moved away and stuff, so I prefer to be out in nature. Now, obviously, if you're constantly the new kid, you're going to be more of a target. If you couple that with some of Rory's unusual traits, just the manner in which he communicates, monotone, demeanor, etc., you could easily see him being bullied as a kid. So, I don't know, but bullying is my guess. Regardless, though, the net result of the whole thing is that he no longer appears to have the will to inflict damage on others. And in a sense, it could not have come at a worse fucking time. Rory has been absolutely clear about the idea that having a daughter reframed the sport and made him want to make sure he was getting properly compensated. That's the whole reason he tested free agency and ultimately left the UFC to try to secure his future. Yeah, you said once you don't want to be a billionaire or that money's not the most important thing. Yeah, it, it definitely hasn't been in my career. Now I have a daughter, so it's, it's becoming more of an issue. <laughs> it's more for her sake. I don't need much. I'm definitely focused on uh, building my wealth now. I, I gotta make some money at this. There's money to be made. People are making money, so I don't want people making all my, uh, the money off, off my back and hard work. You know, I, I need my fair share too. Bellator made him a satisfactory offer, and after four fights, he is enjoying a more comfortable life. Compared to when I first started in martial arts, uh, my life is very comfortable. You know, I, I make better money now, and I have a good life outside of fighting. The issue is that he's now in a welterweight tournament, the winner of which takes home a cool million dollars. So, even though he's made some good money as of late, he's on the cusp of a massive win that could change his future entirely. Opportunities like this do not come along often for fighters, and having come through such a grueling career, it'd be a terrible shame for the guy to miss out. In the end, he's in a million dollar tournament, and uh, the kid's a born, natural born fighter. He's a natural born fighter, and uh, I feel like he's gonna, he's gonna continue on his journey. So I feel personally, he's got a lot of fight left in him. I think he's gonna be very successful in this tournament. I think he's gonna go on to win this tournament. And uh, if he wants to retire after winning the tournament, I think it, make, it could make a lot of sense. He has a baby on the way. Faraz is the voice of reason here. The whole motive for going to Bellator was financial, to get what he's worth, and now it is right in front of him. If he can get his shit together for a couple more fights, he may be able to close his long punishing career on a high, picking up a nice little retirement package as he's stepping out the fucking door. The fact that Rory has confirmed he'll move on in the tournament doesn't really tell us much. Being a father of two, his responsibilities likely dictate that he at least finishes a tournament and tries to collect the check. The question is, can he rekindle enough passion to do so? There's an old cliche in MMA that fighting is 90% mental. This idea was once put to Rory, and he kind of laughed it off as just that, a cliche. He's fighting like 90% mental. I guess, I mean... It's pretty physical too. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's really not surprising Rory would downplay the mental side. He's a guy who's never had to battle with himself. He's never experienced fear before fights. He's always been mentally ready to handle whatever might transpire in the cage. I guess the best example is, is just going into a fight. Like you see some guys are terrified and it works for them like George. <laughs> right, right, right. But I, I'm not scared at all. Like I'm nervous. I definitely have nerves, I'm not gonna lie about that. You know, the anticipation of it, and I think it's natural to just, your body just knows what it's about to go do, but I, I'm not gonna fear what I'm about to do. I'm gonna take it head on, and I'm gonna conquer it. But based on everything he said lately, for the first time in his career, his current campaign sounds like it will be almost entirely a mental battle. A struggle to overcome his reservations and resurrect his ruthless killer instinct for a couple more fights. That's all he needs, a couple more fucking fights. The last point I want to make is that, even though this is an inopportune moment to stumble mentally, there is another way to look at the whole thing, and that is to separate the man from the fighter. You know, when he's in the cage right after a disappointing fight, and he looks lost, confused, and utterly dejected, it seems terrible for the guy. But if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, I mean, if you were a friend of Rory's and you said, hey, how you doing? 
And he said, well, I've been on a bit of a psychological transformation lately. I've managed to deal with my past, face some of my demons, and let go of all the furious pent-up rage that has fueled a vicious career in extreme, high-level ultra-violence. All that anger is gone. You'd have to say, hey, that sounds good. Sounds like you're on the right track as a man from a well-being perspective. Rory has had some brutal beatings. The issues that fueled his career brought him to some dark fucking places. The idea that those issues have been resolved, that's probably not a bad thing for the man behind the violence. Oh.